Today, I'm going to walk you through a quick and accurate calculation design of a truss that you can apply in the real world like a real professional structural engineer. And before you jump on the computer to open up robot or space gas, let me tell you something. One of the senior engineers in our office, I'm not going to say any names, Michael would never let you use the software to do this simple five minutes calculation. So make sure you pay attention, young grasshopper. So let's imagine you're designing a stadium for the 2032 Brisbane Olympic Games. And the trusses will span 30 meters and they're spaced at 10 meters. So the first step that we're gonna go through is to find the loads for the project. Okay, so wing loads will vary a lot from side to side. So for, for the purpose of this exercise and to keep it short, we're not gonna include any wind loading, okay? So the dead load G is equal to 0 0.7 kPa, and this is this has been calculated uh, by determining the self-weight of the roof sheeting, lighting surfaces, and self-weight of the purlins. There's another dead load here, which is the GSW, dead load of the self-weight of the trusses itself, which is two kilonewtons per meters. And then you might be asking yourself how you can know the self-weight of the truss if you haven't even designed it yet. And a quick answer for this question is you don't. Uh, this is an educated guess and we need to verify this number later. So the total dead load GT is equal to G times spacing plus GSW. And notice that I'm not multiplying GSW by the spacing because the self weight of the truss has been calculated in kilonewtons per meters already. Okay, that works out to be nine kilonewtons per meter. And the live load is 0 0.25 kPa. And that comes from AS 1170.1, page 13, table. 3.2 and now we need to transform kPa to kilonewtons per meters and therefore 0 0.25 times the spacing and that gives us 2.5 kilonewtons per meter okay so far nothing difficult we had to find the loads in kPa and transform to linear distributed loads so the next step is the load combination so to design for strength, which is usually bending, shear, compression, and tension, we use ultimate limit state. And WULS, so that's the ultimate, ULS is the ultimate limit state, and we're gonna use WULS, that will be 1.2 times G plus 1.5 times Q. And that's the load combination, which is equal to See so here, let's just fix this number, 14.55 kilonewtons per meter. Now for the serviceability design, we use the service limit states, which is the WSLS equals to G plus 0.7 Q, and that equals to 10.75 kilonewtons per meters. And we use this combination to check the flexion and vibration for our case, we won't check vibration because there won't be anyone walking on the roof, hopefully. And speaking on deflection, we need to find the deflection limit, which in this case, I'm going to adopt span divided by 300 times 1000 to transform to millimeters. That is equal to 100 millimeters. You can find a suggested criteria on AS 1170.0, page 28, table C1. And at the same time, make sure to check with the roof sheeting manufacturer the limits to avoid water ponding. So you might have to set a different deflection limit and you, you also don't want people to freak out with massive sagging. So make sure you pay attention to these limits. So the formula for deflection is five times the loading times the span to the fourth divided by 384 times Young's modulus of steel times the second moment of area. 
the angles modulus of steel is the measure of the material stiffness and we're dealing with 200,000 MPa. So now the only unknown variable of this equation is the second moment of area I. So I'm going to rearrange this formula to work out I. So let's do this one here. There we go. I is equal to 5.66 times to 10 to the 9th millimeters to the 4th and the next step is to choose the steel section that our truss will be made of. Okay, so we can make a truss with angles, uh, PFCs, UCs, SHS. You should choose a section and think about how hard the connections will be to fabricate. And in terms of connections, you can either have a welded or uh, you can have bolted fixings. So for our example, we're going to go with PFCs, which are relatively easy to connect and work with. We do a lot of trusses with SHSs as well, but in this case, we're just going to work with the PFCs. And what we are seeing here is the cross section of our truss. And notice that the PFCs are lying flat. So the 3D would be something like this. So you can see that the top cord the top cord PFC has its flanges pointing downwards and the bottom cord PFC has its flanges pointing upwards. And we will start with a 250 PFC and check if it works. So the second moment of area of a 250 PFC, let's find a table that we can get these values from. So the parallel flange channels, dimensions and properties and the I value is 3.64 times 10 to the 6th and we are that's millimeters to the 4 and we are dealing with IY okay so that's Y axis as the PFC is on its flat so make sure you don't mix that up um, and the area of the PFC is 4520 square millimeters. There we go. Let's change that to two. And the centroid distance XL is 28.6 millimeters. Okay, since this is a built up section, we have to use the parallel axis theorem and you must have learned this in your physics classes so we're going to rearrange this equation to find the little d which is the distance from the centroid of the pfc to the neutral axis of the truss remember that this section is symmetrical therefore we're multiplying everything by two and rearranging this equation we're going to find that d is equal to 791 millimeters the depth of the truss is 2 times little d plus 2 times the centroid distance xl which works out to be approximately 1.7 meters right so let's say um, 1700 millimeters so great, now we know the depth of the truss, which is pretty much what the architect wants to know to proceed with his or her design. And this was a quick and easy concept design. And what we're trying to do here is to make you a more efficient engineer, okay? In the next video, we're gonna design the members in compression and tension, and only then we're going to open the software and verify our calculations and make sure all the numbers are correct. Okay, so stay tuned.